welcome. This is Brett Malley, and this is uh, the first Saturday Photoshop Live event. I have no idea if this is working, and uh, apologies if this is a total crash and burn. Uh, I'm doing it live here from uh, this tree fort that I'm building my son. We're going to talk about Photoshop, uh, but here's a quick view of uh, just, you know, randomly where I'm at, because I have reception here, and why not? It's a nice breezy day. If it's too breezy, I apologize. So uh, I'm going to get going here. So today we're going to talk about two things, two quick tips. Uh, one's more of a beginner of just explaining how to um, use curves and how curves works exactly. Uh, then the other is a, a trick I call the junk drawer where you can heal things um, using mask and the content aware move tool. So we're going to cover those two things and I have no idea how it's going to come across on this phone. So it's an experiment. Thanks for being the guinea pig. Uh, so we'll get started here. I have this image of, uh, let's see, a trip that I took up in, uh, let's see, where are we? Um, live up in the Swiss Alps. That's right. So we did this this trip long time ago uh, for a honeymoon. And anyway, so I have this this image here, and we'll we'll just play around with it. Use this as an example image. Um, let me know if if things are not visible. Um, maybe you can type things, and maybe no one's watching this, and that's okay too. <laughs> so we're gonna get started here. Um, let's first talk about curves. So I'm gonna take a look at this image using curves. So going over to my adjustments. Um, these are all your adjustments panel, if you probably already know. Uh, curves is amazing, especially for covering anything that has to do with uh, lights and darks. If you're doing anything compositing, Curves is a great go-to for making, making sure things match up. Um, curves is also good for just getting your, your levels, everything uh, correct. So, so you want your whites to be white and your darks to be dark, and you don't want things to be um, underexposed or overexposed looking. So Curves uh, will let you articulate exactly what dynamic you want for your image. So, um, and how it works is, is pretty interesting. It's, it's a graph. So we'll, we'll pull it up here. So again, there's the little curves icon. I'm going to click on it. And this is what you typically get, the curves histogram. So I don't know if this is recording. So again, it's going to be a complete crash and burn. But so with the curves histogram, uh, this is giving us information. When a lot of people see this, when a lot of my students see this, uh, they get overwhelmed and they just see, okay, yeah, you bring up the line and it gets lighter and you bring it down and it gets darker. Um, that, that's true, but it's a little bit more nuanced than that. And, and what you can do once you understand what it's doing um, is really neat. So one way that I look at the curves, um, the technical definition of how I would uh, define it is it's a graphical representation of the lights and darks of your image. So um, another way to look at it is if your entire image, right, all those pixels, if all those pixels, what can we see here, uh, of this image were made up of, let's say, black and white sand. So just lights and darks, and that's it. Um, so the quantity of lights um, is going to show as a, a pile of lights here. So imagine you piled up all the light and dark sand. So there's a big, lots of darks in here, some lights in the clouds. Um, you know, some mids, some darks in here, some mids everywhere else. So that is what we're seeing. We're seeing those piles. We're seeing the quantity of those lights and darks in a graph here. So we can see the lights. And so see there's this gradient from black all the way down here to light. So that's showing us that right here, this is the lightest. That is a completely white pixel. There's only a few completely white pixels in this entire image, probably right here in the, the highlights of this cloud. Uh, but otherwise, there's some sort of lighter gray, right? In this range, there's a whole lot of those. Those are all the clouds. Uh, then there's a whole lot of sort of darks to dark grays in here. Um, that's probably all of these, these elements, such as the, the dark green and these rocks and whatnot. So this is a, a pile of light and dark sand, right? If you want to look at that, or light and dark amount of pixels that we're seeing of this image. Um, that make up this image, right? So it's a graphical representation of lights and darks. So what does that mean? How does that actually help anybody? Um, that's you're like, gee, that's that's good to know. Random fact, uh, but no, it's it's really helpful because this graph doesn't just show you what it is, but what you can make it. And what I mean by that is if you want, let's say, one, let's say, dark gray to be a little bit lighter and you want to start, you want to know which dark gray it is and you want to make it go a little bit lighter, you can click on, let's say, this dark gray right here and I come up, I don't know if you can see this, I come up and I can click on this line here. This is what makes it called curves because you can make a curved line. So in general, right, it does this, but how does it actually work? When you click and make a line, it's saying that right now at this darkness, right, so whatever pixels are right there at that darkness, it's matched up over here. This is the what the pixels actually are, and this graph, I mean this uh, gradient, 
this vertical one, is the lights and darks that you can change it to. So let's say right now this dark gray is the same as this dark gray, right? That's a one-to-one. -one. But if we make a point and say what was this dark gray, we're then going to shift up to make something lighter, it's going to make it lighter. And it does it on a curve so that way it has a more natural effect in general. So in essence what we did was brought everything that was this dark gray and lightened it up. So now what was here is now this light. So it was brought from this dark gray to this lighter gray. And you can see everywhere how it made everything lighter because it, it works on, a, again, a nice gentle curve. Um, it made it so what was this dark gray is now a little bit lighter, right? And it did it, did it all the way through. And you can add multiple points um, along this and change um, whether you want to create increased contrast by darkening your darks, right? So we take what was dark, we make it even darker, and we can take what was light and make it even lighter. Um, you can decrease the contrast or just make everything lighter or just make everything darker. You can do any number of things, but in general, understanding what's actually happening when we see this graph is really important to get the, the results that we actually want. Um, by the way, if you cannot see what I'm doing on the screen here because of glare or whatever <laughs> problems that are happening with uh, live stream, um, I will post this video afterwards. Uh, I'm doing a, a screen capture as well, so you can see exactly what I'm doing with the mouse, and I'm recording my voice as well. So if you don't catch it live, it's okay. Well, I'll post the the video afterwards, um, so everyone, so you can you can follow along with it, um, with a high quality version where you can actually see things. So again, um, what was dark, you can make lighter, right? So I'm going to boost up this point. Um, and that's, that's in general how curves works, right? So you work with a, the graph of lights and darks on the image and you can adjust it to whatever you want. Um, in general, good, good practices. If you see something, let's add another curves adjustment here. If you see something that, let's say we do this. If you're looking at your curves, give me a second here. Let's delete both of these. I'm doing this one-handed since I have to hold this phone. This doesn't seem like a very effective way to do it, but <laughs> it should work. All right, so let's say um, we have an image and it's just um, underexposed. It's just too dark. Well, your histogram is really helpful in showing you that, wow, the lightest point that I have is only this mid-gray on this image, since I just sort of artificially darkened it there. So this is really helpful not only to understand you know where you're actually getting the pixels and how light or dark they are um, but you can adjust it and just like in levels you can adjust your white and black point so here this is the the white point so I can adjust it saying nope you know it really should be at the base of the mound so anytime you have any gaps anywhere on your your curves your histogram um, that means that your image is either over or underexposed depending on which side your uh, your big valley is on it. So bring it all the way to the edge of that peak, right, the beginning of that sand pile, as you will, um, and that should get you a, a more proper exposure. At least that's the idea of it. Same with if it's too dark. If you get any gaps, you always want to make sure you're using the full gamut of whatever um, image, you know, you have. Unless you have something that's truly just a bunch of grays, um, you know, which is very rare. Like you're just shooting in an all gray or very sort of neutral, um, you know, lighting and lighting setup. Uh, you typically want your some whites to be at all the way at the white point. And you want some blacks on them to be all the way at the black point. So make sure you set your white and black points. And now we get started. So that's tip number one, or just going over sort of the, the beginner of how histograms work. Um, now I'll cover the uh, the junk drawer method of healing things and just moving things around. So I'm going to get rid of um, these curves adjustments here. Again, I only have one hand, so we'll. We'll see, see how this works. Um, so with this method, this is really helpful for, let's say you're going to do a composite and you're setting up your scene where you you want to be very simple. I don't, let's say, want any rocks to be in a certain you know, area and I don't want a, a building to be there. Uh, I can set it up so that way um, it's all smooth. That way it's ready to, you know, for whatever elements that I want to bring in into this composite. Uh, so basically cleaning up your scene. So this is really helpful for cleaning up your scene and there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, but this has uh, been a neat little fun trick that I've discovered that you can you can use for it. So the junk drawer method. Here it goes. So uh, for the junk drawer method, the, the first thing that you want to do is create a blank new layer. So I'm going to go down, create a new layer. 
I don't know if I'm pointing the camera in the right area, but there it goes. All right, so blank new layer, because I want to do everything non-destructively on its own layer. That's the power of Photoshop, is you can work non-destructively and, and you don't um, get screwed over if you need to go backwards. So I'm going to create a blank new layer, because that's the point of Photoshop. Uh, and then I'm going to get um, my rectangular marquee tool over here. And I'm just going to create a rectangle in the upper left-hand corner. Some place, find some place in your image. It could be very small. It could be just a few pixels wide. But some area that I'm going to call the junk drawer. This is going to work. This is going to be where I'm going to throw whatever content I want to disappear into it, and it will disappear. So I want to just draw out a rectangle, the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to create a mask. So I'm going to go down to the the layers and create a mask. Now this mask is exactly the opposite of what I want masked, so I'm going to awkwardly hit Command-I. Yeah, There we go. So now Command-I inverts that mask to what was black is now white, and what was white is now black. It's a tongue twister for the dyslexic. Uh, so I now have, this is my little junk drawer right in there. So with this, I can now click over, and this is really critical, to not have your mask selected, but to go over to your actual layer and click on your blank new layer. And then you're going to come over here, and you're going to oh, attack of the bugs. That's what I get for being in the tree fort. Uh, I'm going to go over to the Content Aware Move tool. So it's in with all these healing tools. So you have the Spot Healing Brush, Healing, all of this. And then down here, you have the Content Aware Move tool. So this is kind of a neat feature that is typically destructive, um, but I can use it in a, in a non-destructive way that, that's kind of fun. So um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to paint on this blank new layer. And the, the gotcha that you have to do is you have to make sure this is toggled, the sample all layers. Without that, it is not going to work. It's going to look at this blank layer and say, yeah, I'm replacing it with nothing since it's already blank. Uh, so make sure that it's looking at all the layers, including the ones below it, right, with that actual background content um, for whatever you replace. Even though it's writing it to this, this layer, you want it to look at the content of this layer. So that way it's non-destructive. I'm adding things here without destroying this one. So once I have this tool toggle, you can see my cursor has it, I'm going to make some of these disappear. So maybe in my composite ideas, I want uh, to put something else here. I don't know what, right? It could be anything. Um, so I'm going to clear this off of these rocks, maybe because they're a little distracting. I want it to just be mostly green hills um, because, you know, just because. All right, so I'm going to make a selection. This is just like the um, lasso tool. So you get to organically select. And what's nice about this and why not to use just the spot healing tool um, is that you can get different shapes that you can't easily get with a brush necessarily without changing sizes a bunch. And it, it basically does the exact same thing of using the content aware um, algorithm and technology, uh, only it does it with just basically a different tool. So it's, it's really to taste. So basically it's your, um, your lasso tool, uh, but you get to do content aware. So with this layer selected, not its mask, so with this layer selected, um, I make a, a selection around it and make sure you leave room. Just like with sewing, it needs some seams in order to knit it all together with content aware. Uh, so then I'm going to take this and drag it up so you can see me moving it. And notice how it's disappearing in that corner. That's the junk drawer, right, where you throw in all your extra little goodies that you know you'll need maybe, uh, but you throw them away so at least they're not, not visible clutter. Um, so I'm going to take that content, put it up in the sky, uh, and then always forget Photoshop's very insecure. So you say, yes, do what I told you to do. And we look down there and voila, it is gone. And it does it non-destructively on its own blank layer. See how it's it threw content up there and it replaced it. And you can see both little areas there. So I'm going to hit the eyeball off and on so you can see before and after. Right? So it replaced that content. Um, on a blank new layer. So I'm just get quickly going to select and get rid of the rest of this. All right, see I can do some funny little areas and then I can hit enter if you had two hands. Uh, I only have the one here. All right, I'm going to select this other little rock area. And again, you can just do, um, you know, uh, shapes that you couldn't necessarily, you know, quickly do with a brush, but it, it essentially does the same thing. Um, why you can't just throw it off this uh, you know, onto the your work area in general, uh, it has to be uh, moving, right? So it has to be touching some sort of pixels of your workspace. It can't just be all the way off. So that's why you create a little junk drawer space um, somewhere you can throw it. You can't just make your 
your tools and your rubber bands and everything you put in your junk drawer disappear, right? It has to be somewhere uh, within an area you can get it. So then you hit checkbox. And then from there, um, right, it just disappeared and filled it in. I'm going to do that for this last building here. Uh, I'm going to select this around. Oop, grab a little bit too much. Okay. And we hit checkbox. And there it goes. It disappears. And so here's the before and after. So I'm just hitting the eyeball on that. Um, so right there, in very short order, you could just select and make all your, your content disappear into your junk drawer. And it's, again, hidden under this mask. So very quickly, that is, uh, and again, I will post this recording uh, as well as the high-res one. I've been doing a screen capture of this um, on, online um, sometime tonight. So if you miss this live, uh, then you'll be able to, to see the high-res version of it. But um, with that, that is the junk drawer method of how to uh, make things disappear using a healing trick and prepping your, your image for perhaps a composite or something else. Um, as well as we went over curves fully explained and technically how that works. So hopefully you've enjoyed this very short um, piece. Now let's see if there's any questions. Probably not. I'm assuming not. But let's take a look here. Let's see. For all two of you. Excellent. Uh, so if you have any questions, now's the time to ask. Otherwise, I'll just post this video and we should be good to go. So any questions you guys have? Oh, it's my phone does. And I'm looking and waiting. I don't know if I have to refresh. Comments will appear there. Okay. If you don't have any questions about that, and sorry, I went probably really fast, but it's dinner time and I delayed this a little bit too long. But, um, so that that should be should be all I have. So feel free to uh, type in questions, and I will do my best uh, to get back to you as as quick as possible um, and post the high res content of this as well. So with that, that's the first Photoshop Live with Brett Malley. Um, very, I was it? Saturday Photoshop Live. There we go. I'm using it on that. Uh, with Brett Malley. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great Saturday.